IELTS relating reading passage one, you should spend about 20 minutes on questions one to 13, which are based on reading passage one below. Roman tunnels. The, the, Roman, the Romans who once controlled areas of Europe, North Africa and Asia Minor, adopted the construction of techniques of other civilizations to build tunnels in their territories. The Persians who lived in present-day Iran were one of the first civilizations to build tunnels that provided a reliable supply of water to human settlements in dry areas. In the early uh, first millennium BCE, they introduced the Karnat method of tunnel construction, which consisted of placing um, posts of a hill in a straight line uh, to ensure that the tunnel kept to its root and then uh, digging vertical shafts down into the ground at regular intervals. Underground workers removed the earth from between the ends of the shafts, creating a tunnel. The excavated soil was taken up onto the surface using the shafts, which also provided ventilation during the work. Once the tunnel was completed, it allowed water to flow from the top of the hillside down towards the canal, which supplied water for human use. Remarkably, some canals built by the Persians 2,700 years ago are still in use today. The later passed on ancient knowledge to the Romans, who also used the Karnat method and to construct water supply tunnels for agriculture. Roman Karnat tunnels were constructed with vertical shafts dug at intervals of between 30 and 60 meters. The shafts were equipped with with uh, hand tools and uh, footholds uh, to help those, cli those climbing in and out of them and were covered with a wooden or stone lid. To ensure that the shafts were vertical, Roman Romans hung a plumb line from a rod uh, placed across the top of each shaft and made sure that the weight at the end of it hung in the center of the shaft. Plumb lines were also used to measure the depth of the shaft and to determine the slope of the tunnel. The 5.6 kilometers long Claudius tunnel built in 41 CE to drain the Fusin Lake in central Italy uh, had shafts that were up to 122 meters deep, took 11 years to build and involved approximately 30,000 workers. By the 6th century BCE, a second method of tunnel construction uh, appeared called the counter excavation method in which the tunnel was constructed from both ends. Uh, it was used to cut through high mountains when the Karnat method was not a practical alternative. This method required uh, greater planning and advanced knowledge of surveying mathematics and geometry as both ends of a tunnel had to meet correctly at the center of the mountain. Adjustments to the direction of the tunnel also had to be made whenever builders encountered geological problems or when it deviated from its uh, set path. They constantly checked the tunnel's advancing direction. For example, by looking back at the light uh, that um, penetrated and through the tunnel mouth and uh, made um, corrections uh, whenever necessary. Large deviations could happen 
and uh, they could result in one end of the tunnel not being usable. An inscription written on the side of a 428-meter tunnel built by the Romans as part of the Sala uh, aqueduct system in modern-day Algeria describes how the two uh, teams of builders missed each other in the mountain and how the later construction of a lateral link between both corridors corrected the initial error. The Romans dug tunnels for their roads uh, using the counter excavation method whenever they uh, encountered, encountered obstacles such as hills or mountains that were too high for roads to pass over. An example is the 37 meter long, 6 meter high follow pass tunnel built in Italy in 69 to 79 CE. Remarkably, our modern road still uses this tunnel today. Tunnels were also built for mineral extraction. Miners would locate a, a mineral vein and then pursue it with shafts and tunnels underground. Traces of such tunnels used to mine gold can still be found at the Dolakoti mines uh, in Wales when the when the sole purpose of the tunnel was mineral extraction, construction required less planning as the tunnel route was determined by the mineral vein. Roman tunnel projects were uh, carefully planned and carried out. The length of time it took to construct a tunnel depended on the method being used and the type of rock being excavated. The canal construction uh, method was usually faster than the counter excavation method as it was more straightforward. This was because the mountain could be excavated not only from the tunnel mouths, uh, but also from shafts. The type of shock could also influence construction times. When the rock was hard, the Romans employed a technique called the quenching, which consisted of heating the rock with fire and then suddenly cooling it with cold water so that it would crack. Uh, progress through hard rock could be very slow, and it was not uncommon for tunnels to uh, take years if not decades, to be built. Construction of marks left on a Roman tunnel in Bologna showed that the rate of advance through solid rock was 30 centimeters per day. Uh, in, in contrast, the rate of an advance of the Claudius tunnel can be calculated at 1.4 meters per day. Most tunnels had inscriptions showing the names of patrons who ordered construction and sometimes the name of the architect. For example, the 1.4 kilometer Shevlik tunnel in Turkey built to divert the flood water threatening the harbor of the ancient city of Seleucia, Seleucia Pedia. Uh, had inscriptions on the entrance are still invisible, still visible today, that also indicate the, that the tunnel was started in 69 CE and was completed in 81 CE.